Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. We are in Kansas City for the second of our Sweet 16 matchups. Mississippi State has beaten NC State, so they will get the winner of tonight's UCLA Texas matchup. And we welcome you to Kansas City. Pam Ward along with Hall of Fame coach Gail Gestenkors. And Gail, we have been looking forward to this matchup. Should be a lot of fun. Well, it will be. We're going to see a track meet tonight. Both teams love to run and excel in transition. Both average over 75 points a game. They are led by two of the best point guards in the country. And we're going to start with Texas, the diminutive but talented Brooke McCarty. Yeah, Brooke McCarty. She finds her teammates in the open court. She's the heart and soul of this team. Loves that little floater on the inside. And then Jordan Canada. She does it on both ends. She's the Pac-12 co-defensive player of the year. And on deep on offense, she is spectacular. She gets it done. She's a highlight tape. It's the third time in the last four years these two teams have met, including in the Sweet 16 a couple of years ago when Texas won. Let's go over now to Courtney Lyle. Well, no matter the outcome of this game, this will be the final Sweet 16 for seniors on both teams, and they have meant so much to each program. You look at the Texas senior class has done. They've been to the Sweet 16 the last four years. For UCLA, for the first time ever, they're making their third straight appearance in the Sweet 16. And Coach Corey Close has her team pick a word for the season. I love what Monique Billings did. She picked legacy. She wants to leave an impact when she plays for the Bruins. She already has in so many ways. No one has had more blocks, as you see. She has her own YouTube channel. She took a sociology final today, had a paper that was due yesterday, and here she is getting ready to take on Texas. There's Brooke McCarty, who has had a spectacular first two games of the NCAA tournament. And we are underway. Texas, the number two seed, UCLA, the three seed. KC Regional, again, the only one of the four with the top four seeds, all got to the Sweet 16. You can see UCLA, they're starting off in a zone. UCLA, 26 wins on the year. LaShawn Higgs has been as hot as just about anybody in this tournament, but missed her first shot. Yeah, you know, LaShawn Higgs averaging 17 points a game, shooting 79% in the tournament so far. As you take a look at the lineups on the floor, brought to you by Capital One, Jordan Canada, we talked about, Monique B Billings, they are the dynamic duo. And Monique hits her first shot, second leading scorer behind Canada. She's averaging 17 and a half points per game and almost 10 rebounds in the first two games. Wins over American and Creighton. And we talked about a track meet, and we can see it right away. Andrew Burke gives UCLA the 4-0 lead. Again, these two teams played two years ago in the Sweet 16 in Bridgeport. Texas won at 72-64. to Before going on to lose to UConn. Joyner Holmes gets inside for her first basket. Sophomore from Cedar Hills. Texas with wins over Maine and Arizona State at home in Austin to get here. Billings couldn't hang on, and now McCarty in the open court. Texas 14th in the nation in points per game. Ariel Atkins left it a bit shy. And Jordan Canada with the ball in her hands. Part of that number one recruiting class that came in to play for Corey Close. And here they are now, back in the Sweet 16, trying to advance. Gains in Canada, they say they are peanut butter and jelly, without specifying who is who. Well, they said it doesn't matter who is who, she said they just go together. <laughs> and they have had spectacular seasons. Billings, two-time All-Pac-12 and All-Defensive. Canada, three-time All-Pac-12. Starting since her freshman year at the point. UCLA just giving some token pressure in the three-quarter court. I want to make Texas take some time off of the clock so they don't have as much time in the quarter court to figure out the zone. Karen Ashton in her sixth year was last season's Big 12 Coach of the Year. She's taken her team now to four straight Sweet 16s. The winner will get Mississippi State, the 
top seed on Sunday night. Billings drives and finishes. And that's Billings. She's such a tremendous athlete. That high post, drive into the basket, is going to be tough to defend. She had 20 points and 12 rebounds a couple of years ago against Texas in the Sweet 16. And very quickly, Jatari White answers. Transfer from South Carolina. I don't think we're going to see many shot clock violations in this game. <laughs> Corey Close in her seventh year at UCLA. Played her college ball at UC Santa Barbara. Also was an assistant for a couple of years at UCLA before she became an assistant at Florida State and had some time to meet with John Wooden. That has made a huge impact on her life and career. And more on that as the game progresses. Joyner Holmes steps. It's a couple of traveling calls now on Texas. But I like that Texas is getting Holmes down on that low block. That's where they want to see her. Billings out, Bean in. Joyner Holmes did not play the first 10 games. She was not enrolled in school for the first semester. And you see she has really started to pick her game up in the first two games of this NCAA tournament, in part because they are getting her on the lower block more, where she's more comfortable. Billings just turned into a trio of Longhorns. Canada with six seconds left on the shot clock. Stepped away from White. And he's battled for the board, and yes, she can bring the ball up by herself. Higgs. Met by Billings, and the ball is off of UCLA. Texas just two of six so far, coming off back-to-back -back games, in which they hit 62% from the floor in each game, and both of those were season highs. Yeah, they've been doing a great job really sharing the basketball, making that extra pass, and when they missed, first 26 on the boards in those first two games. Ariel Atkins, another senior in that backcourt along with McCarty, gave it up to Brooke. Brooke left open. Texas cold to start. Billings picks up the loose ball. And now Canada, you see that speed. Billings able to get rid of Holmes. Nicely done. Good poise by Billings. For her to stop on a dime, make that catch and finish, very impressive. Billings three for four from the floor. As UCLA has opened up a four-point lead. Already a big night for the Pac-12 as Oregon State has eliminated Baylor. Higgs missed everything, but McCarty, who is a really good rebounding guard, and she gives the credit to the bigs on her team. She said they do the blocking out, and she can just kind of come in and poach rebounds. Yeah, averaging eight and a half rebounds in the tournament, leading the team. And she's 5-4 in her sneakers. Turnover gives it right back to the Longhorns. Timeout on the floor off to a great start. UCLA up two. Brooke McCarty doing what she does. Central Michigan making their first Sweet 16 appearances. Asia Wilson, see how far she can take South Carolina as a senior. And UConn takes on Duke as they try to get to their, to an Elite Eight again. Ariel Atkins can't get it to go. And rebounding so big in this game, both coaches talked about that. They're even in rebounds now, UCLA plus one. But Texas has come out of the gates cold from the floor. Well, and they've taken five threes out of their 10 shots, and that's about five too many. You want to start inside and work your way outside, but the zone is luring them into taking those outside shots. Akila Onionware, from, a freshman from Colorado, able to get inside of Holmes to get the basket. For Texas, they're looking to overload this zone a little bit. Jump off at five for McCarty. 
Biggs is going to have to shoot. Instead, passes it off to Holmes, who just got it off in time. And the ball goes over to UCLA. Texas just 3 of 10 from the floor so far tonight. A team that averages 81 points per game. 14th best in the nation. And second only to Baylor in the Big 12. Baylor just lost to Oregon State. So they are done. Their only other loss this year was to UCLA. Joyner Holmes does not have numbers and waits for help. Kari White could not handle the Holmes pass cleanly. Another turnover. Karen Aston brings in Shug Sutton for Jatari White. So they're going a little bit smaller now. And Ariel Atkins now moves to that four position. So attacking the zone, now you've got four shooters on the perimeter. Look for them to penetrate into those gaps a little bit more as well. Higgs and Atkins both over three from the floor for the Longhorns. And then a great play by McCarty, who got the steal and then was fouled by Onionware. Yeah, and it was a great back screen by Canada. It was going to be an easy two. McCarty just so savvy on the defensive end. Look, McCarty's so smart. The senior from League City, Texas. Leading the Big 12 and assist to turnover ratio this year. Ball in her hands. And that diagonal pass. They're missing Holmes on that weak side. She's been open a few times. McCarty got bottled up. Atkins with the two, and that's an over-the-back call on Holmes. The NIT heads to New York for its final four. Semifinal action tips off Tuesday at 7 Eastern. Western Kentucky takes on Utah and ESPN in the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, home for all 90 NCAA championships. Billings, quick pass, and a couple of quick buckets for Onionware. Yeah, and Billings, she's locked in, whether she's scoring or hitting her open teammate. Had a chance to meet with Billings and Canada and Kelly Hayes, the three prominent seniors for UCLA. And a nice job. Did you see the double team? You know when you're doubled, somebody else is open. Making the extra pass. Onionware just goes out after picking up her second personal foul. Ball stays with Texas. 27 seconds to shoot. Just six points for the Longhorns in almost eight minutes. Higg showing some of that athleticism to go out and get the inbounds, but then she lost it. Right now, UCLA is just a little bit quicker to those passes. Four turnovers for Texas. Billings missed a shot she usually would make. Shook Sutton, stop, pop, and short. Not a lot of offensive boards so far for Texas, and a charge call. And Kennedy Burke, who now has two. And Ariel Atkins shows why she was, oh, she might have, she lifted her little heel up because that heel was on the restricted area, but she shows why she was on the all-defensive team for Big 12. Senior from Duncanville, so smart, making her 100th start of her career. So Kennedy Burke joins Onionware on the bench. A couple of forwards for UCLA with two fouls. Yeah, and Burke, she's a key. And of course, Close talked about, both coaches actually talked about, they knew what they were going to get from their, their seniors and their stars, but they needed other players to be those X factors. Ke Kennedy Burke was one of them. That's a three for Atkins, her first basket of the night. Quick shot on the other end, rebounded by Jatari White. Sutton hits it. And this is what Texas does. When they rebound the ball, when they get you to quick shoot, rebound the ball, they get out in transition. That's when they're the most dangerous. So the lead is just one. Billings 
being dared to shoot, but that's not her range. A couple of steps, and one of them was illegal. Nice job by Texas getting out in transi transition. Shook Sutton loves that little stop and pop in the lane. Shook Sutton's from St. Louis, so she's thrilled to be back in her home state. Has at least 20 people here to watch her play. Atkins. Another Texas turnover. That is five turnovers apiece. Joyner Holmes back in after a respite, and Atkins goes out. Joyner with two points and a couple of rebounds. Billings takes it right. Pat White. And that's what Jordan Canada does. Sneaks in, gets an easy two. Canada with some thievery, and then it ends up with a three-point play for Dean. For Grace Dean, who's from Austin, Texas. Yeah, five quick points. White missed everything. Rebound taken down by Drummer. And now Canada almost got the three to go. And we expected a quick pace, and we got it. UCLA by eight after one. Ariel Atkins, Jordan Canada, two of the best in the business. We got a good one going in Kansas City. Welcome back to Kansas City. We're joined now by UCLA head coach Corey Close. And coach, they had a couple of transition buckets to cut it to one. Do you like how your team responded? I do. I think they were really composed and they're a really good team. They score most of their points in transition. We got to get back and slow the ball a little bit earlier. But for the most part, I like the shots that we're forcing. What else do you want to see in the second quarter? Well, I think we got to do a better job moving the basketball. We're making one or two passes. Monique Billings is really hot, but we've got to take, keep coming back to her. And as they take her away, other people got to be aggressive to score. Thank you, Coach. You bet. UCLA ended that quarter on a 7 to nothing run. Yeah, and they did it by attacking the basket offensively. They're not settling for those outside shots. And then just going inside quick. Oh, that was Jacrese Dean. Nice job. And then Jordan Canada. Quick steal. Find your teammates. Dean, two for two. Five quick points in seven minutes. UCLA taking advantage of Texas turnovers. They have scored nine points of seven Texas turnovers for the Longhorns. Here's Courtney Lyle. Well, in that last huddle, Karen Aston was really frank with her team. She said the effort right now is not great. I want to see more. And the bottom line is they're scoring in the paint and we're not. We cannot just settle for threes and rely on the long shot. Well, that's exactly right, Courtney. They've been, they're one for six now from the three-point line. So their strength is the inside. Their guards are great when they penetrate. They can hit the open three, but you always want to start off going inside first. Challenge those UCLA post defenders. Billings just picked up her first foul. Only Jody Conrad has won more games at the University of Texas and Karen Aston, who now is having a chat with Ariel Atkins. They did on this trip get into Jatari White, and she's able to go to the free throw line. Two years at South Carolina, wasn't used much, averaged three points and three rebounds, but was playing behind people like uh, Asia Wilson, Elena Coates. And now making a mark as a starter, averaging 10 and a half points a game for Texas. Billings are daring her to shoot from out there. White comes up with the miss. And that's what Corey Close talked about, is moving the ball. Billings is hot, but you still reverse the ball, get some more touches. You're going to get that same shot or a better one if you'll move the ball. Texas threw the ball away again. Their eighth turnover. They average just under 15. And if there's been an Achilles heel thus far in the tournament, they turn the ball over. Every possession matters. Canada drives, got foul. Jody Conrad, one of the 
one of the legends in this game. Head coach until 2007, Women's Basketball Hall of Famer. Still makes her home in Austin. Karen Aston was a longtime assistant for her. Yes, she's got a look of concern on her face. <laughs> <laughs> I think that happens with all, all ex-coaches. They're still thinking the game. Jordan Canada picked up her first point. She's only taken one shot from the floor, and it was a three-pointer. Leading scorer, just under 17 per game on the season. She's a terrific free throw shooter at 82%. Well, oh, I think Jordan Canada, she's trying to get her team involved. Excellent block by Billings. You think you've got the penetration? Billings is such a quick jumper. Nobody in UCLA history has more blocks than Billings. Backing up. And then the turnaround over White. Hayes could not quite bat it to herself, and the ball goes over to Texas. Texas trailing UCLA 21 to 13, and the Longhorns just keep throwing the ball away. Now nine turnovers. UCLA has led from the very start of this game. The winner gets Mississippi State with a trip to the Final Four on the line on Sunday night. Billings with eight to lead UCLA. Texas in their fourth straight Sweet 16 and the turnover forced by Jordan Canada. And Jordan Canada is so good defensively. She's pretty good offensively Yeah, too. I think I would take her on my uh, offensive team as well. Great hustle by both teams. Canada with the opportunity to throw it in. Jordan Canada, a point guard, looks over at Corey Close to get the play call. And Corey Close was a point guard at UCSB. And they kind of butted heads a little bit at the beginning of Jordan's career. But that, that is not unusual, is it? Well, actually, most coaches butt heads with their point guards <laughs> when they're young because you're trying to get them to be a coach on the floor and be a leader on the floor. And you can't, just can't do your own thing anymore. You've got to get everybody else involved. You've got to run the plays and know when and where and what to call. Guys, talking about Jordan Canada, she was asked, you know, what kind of NBA players or professional players do you compare yourself to? And she mentioned Rajon Rondo just for his well-rounded game and the defense. I mean, she's the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. How many times does a point guard get that? Not often. Usually they give it to those shot block and post players. Shook Sutton with her second basket. And now a whistle away from the ball. Texas foul. Jatari White called for her first personal, third team foul. Jordan Canada from Los Angeles grew up not very far at all from the UCLA campus, was a McDonald's All-American. She and Billings who got fouled on the step through along with Drummer and Hayes have really elevated this program. Holmes called for that last foul. Texas has 10 all McDonald's All-Americans, twice as many as UCLA. Yeah, it's really interesting. We went from a game that we just had with Mississippi State and NC State, zero McDonald's All-Americans to 15 in this game. Zero between them. Billings misses the most first free throw. In fact, Mississippi State has never had a McDonald's All-American, which is extraordinary, particularly for a team in the SEC that went all the way to the national championship game last year, won the regular season championship, first time any women's team in Mississippi State has won an SEC title. And they will play the winner of this game coming up in a couple of days. Yeah, and they didn't just win it, they won it going away. Beat teams by over 20 points a game in conference play. Texas hangs on to the ball with 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Chantel Horvat has checked in for UCLA number zero, a freshman from Australia. 6-1, giving him some more height. White, that is nifty. Now that's a beautiful move. Great step through. Going to the basket. 
Before that, we just talked about the Aussie. She's not gun shy, comes right in and blows up the three. And she only averages four points, so she's almost to her average. Her dad was a great soccer player, but the captain of their national team, and now is a TV commentator in Australia for soccer. Or football. Another throwaway. Billings behind everybody. And she's fouled. UCLA making Texas pay for their sloppiness. And a great job. Those posts for UCLA are running the floor. Great vision again by Canada. Timeout. Karen Aston had talked about how UCLA can turn a team over and that they take advantage of carelessness, and they're doing that right now. Thank you, Maria. And yes, Baylor losing is half of our headlines as uh, they went down to Oregon State. And Mississippi State, Tara McCowan ties an NCAA record, 11 field goals without a miss. As Mississippi State dismissed NC State, they await the winner of this game. And Texas, Gail, they are just throwing the ball all over the place. That was a foul, however, on that UCLA. 12 turnovers already. Yeah, and they've been averaging 18 and a half during this NCAA tournament. So they've been turning it over too much, but 12, it's the quickness right now of UCLA. It's almost like their passes are just not sharp, and there's another turnover. Make it 13 turnovers, and UCLA has scored almost half of their points, 13 off of Longhorn giveaways. A foul coming up on Higgs, who ran into Canada. So 20 in the first round against Maine, 17 against Arizona State, both wins in Austin. But again, Karen, Karen Atten, the first thing she said to us yesterday is we need to be tighter with the ball against UCLA, and they are not. Yeah, and those 20 versus Maine, that was a 2-3 zone. So it's not like it was a team that was up in your grill and pressing you. It was a very passive 2-3 zone, and they had 20 turnovers. Canada with a rare miss at the line. Higgs goes out in favor of Jada Underwood. Sophomore from Mesquite, Texas. He has not gotten a lot of playing time in the NCAA tournament so far. And I think Kieran Aston's trying to find the right combination um, that's, that's going to work and take care of the basketball, get it inside. Yeah, Atkins is not in the game. Underwood 12 with the ball, gets it over to Hosey, who is also checked in. And that's exactly what she was hoping. Underwood comes in and hits her first shot. Canada bottled up by Sutton, but still got the shot off. Canada's so good with dribbling with her left hand as well as her right. And look for Texas maybe to set some screens on this zone. They're trying to work that high post, which is a good area against the zone. White got fouled. Coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championships continue with the Sweet 16 tonight on TBS and CBS. For matchup and game times, go to NCAA.com. Lauren Miller committed the foul for UCLA, sending White to the line. Atari White leading the way with seven points for UCLA. Billings back in. Warren Miller, who committed the foul, is a Missouri native. And Kirkwood. Billings couldn't get the rebound, but a good save by Dean. Canada looks over at Coach Close to get the call. Rick McCarty, by the way, just two points for Texas so far. Billings off the mark. Good job by Sutton to Sky and get the board. Coach Aston going with the reserves. Well, and that's the depth of Texas. They've got so many players that can beat you, both the starters and coming off the bench. 
Sutton. He's got six points off the bench. Well, Ariel Atkins has been for quite a while. She only has three points, so she and McCarty just five. And another miss. Texas starting to rebound. Kicked ball. Texas retains possession. Alameda Aborowa comes in as McCarty and White sit down. And they keep bringing in fresh bodies, and it makes you wonder, late in the game, will they be able to wear down this UCLA defense? Another turnover, Canada gets it to Dean, and she lays it in. Bruce Dean went to Vista Ridge High School in Austin, played her freshman year at Texas Tech, and then transferred to UCLA. Another pick, three on one. Billings to Dean, who has to pull it out. Hayes couldn't bank it in. But UCLA gets the second chance and the basket. Lajene Drummer with her first field goal of the night. And UCLA is beating Texas at its own game. Texas has been just crushing people on the boards. Second in the nation in rebound differential, but it's UCLA today that's getting to those rebounds and finishing. Borowa with the foul, and Billings gets in. Two offensive boards. Drummer converts. And just as Texas was nipping into the lead, it's back to an 11-point advantage for UCLA. That is their largest lead of the night. And it's happened twice now where they've built a nice league. Texas comes back. And then UCLA just goes ahead. It's like a punch counter punch. Canada wild shot off the backboard and then a foul by Hayes. Yeah, and just look at the UCLA players up and around. It's like they're playing volleyball. <laughs> just really quicker to the ball. Kelly Hayes, the senior from San Jose, Monique Billings, we have just seen, she's so, she almost looks like a volleyball player, doesn't she? Just real lean and, and can jump quickly like a volleyball player. Two-time All-Pac-12 performer. She actually was a three-time state high jump champion. Looks like a high jump. It shows. <laughs> yes. Cardi, one of the few times she's gotten an open look. She can put up points in a hurry. You know, just some miscommunication there for UCLA. One shot short. Billings tried to bat it back, but it was out of bounds. Kennedy Burke took the shot and was complaining to the officials that it was tipped, but it was not ruled thusly. Posey, challenged by Billings. And I think Coach Carrick, Corey Close is upset. Now she's telling him to slow down. When things are rolling, sometimes you get in that habit of taking quick shots when it's going great. But when you miss one or two, now you need to slow down, reset. Billings with another board, tried to get it inside. It's fortunate the ball bounced to her off the foot of Burke. Shot clock winding down. And UCLA delivers. It was onionware. She averages six points, oh, seven points, excuse me, and already has six tonight. White guarded by Billings. Same move. Yep. Atari White's doing a nice job with her counter moves. White, the first into double figures for Texas with 11 points, which is her season average. Hayes able to get around Higgs. It's good work by Kelly Hayes because she looked like she was bottled up. As we hit a minute to go in the first half. 
White misses everything. Toria Vivians. And the stars from Mississippi State. That's Chloe Bibby behind her with the red hair. Dominique Dillingham, who's an assistant, a grad assistant coach, actually, and was a key cog on the team that went to the championship game last year. They're doing a little advanced scouting. She's, she needs to be writing some things down on that tablet. And you know Vic's watching. Vic Schaefer, the head coach. Got a Coach of the Year award. Congratulations to Vic. Very much deserving. That's a nice, quick move, isn't it, by Kennedy Burke? Junior from Northridge. Yeah, the post players for UCLA just really taking advantage of their quickness versus the Texas post players. Ten point lead, UCLA has not trailed in this game. McCarty, Billings got up in her face and that was a good dish off to Aborowa. Shot clock is off for the Bruins. Directing traffic. A crossover got the screen from Billings. Couldn't get the shot to fall. And now Sutton, as the half comes to a close, UCLA, the three seed in Kansas City, takes an eight point lead into the locker room. UCLA has not trailed in this game. Texas ended up shooting 48% in the first half, but committed 15 turnovers. Monique Billings had caused some problems. Here she is with Courtney Lyle. Monique, your defense forced 15 turnovers. How are you guys so disruptive? We're playing really aggressive right now. We're playing poise, under control, and it feels like a track meet right now. But that's how we want it right now. All but one who has played for you guys have scored. How important is it to have help from all areas? That's what March is all about. Everyone has to contribute and give in the game as much as they can. Thank you. Thank you. Monique Billings, one of the seniors from the number one overall recruiting class from four years ago. And she has been quite good. Billings with 11 points. UCLA up by eight. Coming up after the break, the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Second half about to get underway in the Sweet 16 in Kansas City. UCLA, the number three seed, leads number two seed Texas by eight points. Pam Ward along with Hall of Famer Gail Gestenkors in Texas with 19 turnovers in that first half. Yeah, and it was really tough because it, we wanted to track me, but we didn't want him to turn it over that much. And it was really Monique Billings, 11 points, caused a lot of trouble for Texas. It was 19 Actually, the 15 turnovers of accounting for 19 points. And Ariel Atkins gets the basket. Atkins was limited to only 11 minutes because she picked up two fouls. Well, and with her and Joyner Holmes only played nine minutes because of those two fouls. So even though Texas was down eight, they had to feel pretty good. Get those two players back in. Both coaches in the locker room before they came back out. Everybody together. Play present, possession by possession, finish empty. All right, let's go. We're just standing there watching UCLA go get the ball. Is that the way y'all want to finish this? Mm -hmm. Seriously. Because I would die if I had to look back on this game and watch it and watch our team walk around like this. So change that part of it, okay? And the rest of it will happen for you. And things have come out nicely in the first minute. Jatari White leading the way now with 13 points. And Joyner Holmes comes in with the rebound. UCLA was minus two in rebounds in the first half. Diggs and or Higgs, excuse me, didn't realize how open she was. The guards for Texas in the first half, McCarty, Atkins, and Higgs combined for just eight points on three of 12 shooting. And you can already feel in this second half the energy shift for Texas. 
And Holmes will no look into White. Got bottled up by Billings. Still got the shot off, and nobody checked out Holmes. And it is a one-point game. Timeout taken by UCLA. Texas has scored the first seven points of the third quarter. Time now to take a look at the Google Cloud highlights, and Texas has come out in the third quarter on fire. Well, and it started with Ariel Atkins, the senior. She shoots 41% from the three. You've got a defender. And then she takes things into her own hand, drive, find the open teammate. And then it's about getting on the offensive glass. Joyner Holmes does the work. That Gets nine, the finish. Excuse me, the 9 nothing run going back to the second quarter. It is 7 nothing here. In the third quarter, the winner of this game gets Mississippi State on Sunday night. In the Elite Eight, UCLA has led the entire way. Inside, Billings got it taken away by Holmes. And Holmes, who is as fast as some guards, gives it up, and Texas leads for the first time tonight. And that is just a beautiful play from the 6'3 sophomore. And that is the first points for LaShawn Higgs, who averages 13 and has had a brilliant tournament so far. Had 19 against Arizona State in the second round. But UCLA comes right back. Jordan Canada's first field goal of the night. McCarty answers. Here we go. And that's what we expected, these two senior point guards to take control of the, their teams. Burke left it a little bit too long, and now McCarty squirts through everybody. He scores! And there's the Brooke McCarty smile. McCarty and Atkins, the senior backcourt for this Texas team. Billings posting up against White. And another turnover, this time Atkins forced it, got a hand in there. And that's the third turnover now we've seen from UCLA in this half. Boy, Holmes almost was able to catch it on the fly and put it in. Canada, well off the mark. And Holmes again comes away with it she gets the ball you see the guards just spin up because they know joiner can bring it up on her own yeah it just makes it so difficult to defend party bounce pass bodies on the floor possession arrow in favor of the bruins and we this was the track meet that we were expecting mccarty she's got some post moves in her and before that, we saw her nail that big three. Joyner Holmes, just unbelievable. Such a big presence. She's got post body, but guard skills. Texas hitting six of nine in this quarter. When they come off the turnovers, because UCLA's been turning the ball over, that's where we know Texas is effective in the open court. UCLA hasn't been able to get back into their 2-3 zone that was so effective in the first half. Billings does a good job of drawing fouls. This time it's Jatari White, Lisa Jones, Brian Hall, who Alani Spurlock, our officials this evening. And now Billings heads to the free throw line. Among her many accomplishments, she tied the UCLA record last season. She had 25 rebounds in a game against Washington State. Matching her jersey number. White gets a well-deserved break and a nice hand from the Texas fans. A lane violation on McCarty, who says, what? <laughs> Wants an explanation from Brian Hall. Even when she's guilty, she looks innocent. Yes. <laughs> Billings takes advantage of the second chance. Billings gets to the line more than any other Bruin about six times a game. Cuts the lead to one. Yeah. 
Higgs, who can be so explosive, got it caught for taking steps. Yeah, Higgs has been playing so well. You can see the frustration on her face. She was 15 of 19 in the first two rounds against Maine and Arizona State combined. That was a nice play post to post. Billings into Burke. And CLA back on top. McCarty got bumped. Good job of selling that. Second on Canada. That's the Square Garden hosts the NIT's Final Four for the men. It's Mississippi State, Penn State. In a second semifinal Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. NCAA.com, the home for all 90. NCAA championships. There's the speed of Canada. And that's where Canada, she was frustrated because she got called for that foul. So she went right back at McCarty. Canada with an uncharacteristically bad shooting half, 0 for 5 in the first half, and there's Kennedy Burke at 6-1 getting her hand up in the passing lane. Canada, yes, and the foul! Jordan Canada putting that slow start in her rearview mirror. And that's what makes her so special, the ability to finish with some English. Love it. Takes the contact, absorbs, Knocks down two more. Sign out. I know you're a really good singer. Can you sing something for us? Yes, I can sing a little bit. Um, just a little, little taste. Just a little taste. Um. Some people want it all, but I don't want nothing at all. If it ain't you, baby. If I ain't got you, baby, some people want to die. Oh, that messed up. That was so perfect. That was so amazing. Oh, my Thank gosh. You. Thank you. It's Courtney Lyle with Jordan Canada yesterday. Is there anything Jordan Canada can't do? I don't think so. Alicia Keys, you even knew who the singer was. That's, yeah, after she named about 10 others that she... <laughs> Here's Courtney. I thought it was interesting too. Speaking of her voice, it really took a lot of work and a work in a program called Leaders in Training that's led by assistant coach Shannon Perry for Jordan to find her voice for this team. She said as a freshman, she really didn't know how to use it with a team, but now as a senior, she's learned what needs to be said at the right time to get the most out of her teammates. Yes, and Shannon Perry, I was very fortunate to have her on my staff as an assistant for many years, so such a quality human being and an excellent coach. Well, Perry was your assistant at Duke. Canada hit again on the other end. Texas led by three, and now UCLA making this 10-0 run. McCarty just off the back of the rim. Jordan Canada able to run it down. Waits for help, finds it. And a rebound by Onionware, unable to Put it home. Holmes takes it right to the basket. You can't stop that. That's like a freight train coming at you. 6'3 sophomore from Cedar Hills, Texas. Last year's Big 12 freshman of the year. Average nine points per game. Numbers down this year. Missed the first semester. Not enrolled in school. But coming on in the NCAA tournament. Billings, just a little bit of space. Foul against the Bruins as Atkins hits the court. Joiner Holmes. And that's just an incredible move. Getting a little stare down. Kennedy Burke just picked up her third foul for the Bruins. She's got six points tonight, averages 10 and a half per game. And Corey Close is keeping her out there with the three fouls, number 22 for UCLA. Atkins rims out. <laughs> Canada wanted to keep going. That was just, that was kind of funny. Now and then we looked can over, see, yes, because Corey Close wanted her to slow down and call a play, and 
Jordan, if she had her druthers, would have kept on going. I think she would always go full speed <laughs> all the time, but learning the pace of the game. And that's why you want to slow it down. Get the shot you want. Drummer with the bucket. But that was a priceless reaction. Jatari White. What a game. And Aston said White has anchored her team this season, and she certainly has done that tonight with 15 points and six rebounds. Yeah, and she's six for nine from the floor, so I'd look for Texas. Sometimes they're quick shooting as well. Get the ball into the big girl. Billings takes a step to avoid trouble. Good tip back by Burke, who got fouled. So Kennedy Burke kept in there with the three personal fouls, just got that bucket. Great job on the offensive glass. Nice move inside. But just staying aggressive and active on that glass. Three fouls on Ariel Atkins as Burke completes the three-point play. Kennedy, a two-time honorable mention all Pac-12 performer. Lead is eight. Texas down eight at the half, took a three-point lead. And now down eight again. McCarty, a little bit too much mustard on that pass to White. And that is 19 turnovers now for Texas. UCLA has scored 25 points off the turnovers, and that is an opponent season high already. And we've got more than a quarter to go. That's kind of what UCLA can do to you. Speed you up. Nice roll. That was a beautiful pick and roll. And that's where the posts are so quick on their rolls. They're quick with everything, very athletic. We've seen it on the offensive glass. We see it rolling to the basket. 10 point advantage. Sutton, the Missouri native. McCarty, quick little. Crossover, but left it shy. Ariel Atkins still out there, even with three personal fouls for Texas. One of their star guards. Billings got stripped by Holmes on the way up, but it stays with the Bruins. And again, nice job. Little DHO, she's gonna set that screen and roll so quickly. The help side is late getting over for Texas. One minute left in the third quarter. 19 seconds on the shot clock. Canada inbounds. Caprice Dean back in the game. Yeah, they've got a mismatch on the inside. If Drummer will go down, there we go. She goes down and posts up. But it was tipped away and ultimately stolen. And now Holmes beats Dean. But it won't go in, Atkins follows, no, Texas! With two golden chances, but at least they hang on to the basketball. Yeah, you don't see them miss wide open layups too often. Just, just rushing a little bit, but they got another shot at it. Atkins just two of eight tonight. Holmes missed again inside. UCLA basketball. For UCLA to really work this clock down. Less than a second difference, game clock, shot clock. What a ball screen for Canada. Let her work her magic. Williams and Joyner around the free throw line, the two bigs. And Sean Higgs is considered the best defensive player on the perimeter. Trying to get it back to Canada, and they won't get a shot off. Just a half a second left now for Texas. Ariel Atkins with the throw in. Joyner Holmes all the way down on the other end of the court. I'd send somebody else down long to, <laughs> to be with Joyner Holmes, because if they throw it to her, enough time for just a catch and shoot. Now the officials, two of them going over. Lisa Jones, Brian Hall to make sure that the 
clock is where it should be with 0.5 seconds left to go. Well, this is good. This helps Texas because Karen Aston can go ahead and try to look for a long ball play, set, set up a long ball play for her Texas Longhorns. That gives her a free timeout. Same for Corey Close. Texas down by eight, coming in, came out like gangbusters to take a three-point lead, but they haven't scored now in the last two and a half minutes. Looks pretty close, maybe 0.7. So they are putting some more time back on the clock. 1.3. These officials are on it. Exactly what we saw. So let's see. Joyner Holmes now will throw the ball in. A little bit more time. Ariel Atkins and Shug Sutton are in the front court. Shug. To end the third quarter, UCLA with a 10-point advantage as we go into the fourth. It was a back-and-forth third quarter. joined now by Texas head coach Karen Aston and coach those first few minutes out of the locker room it looked like a different team what changed well I thought we, we definitely came out with more energy but uh, again we've got to play every play and I you know transition defense is hurting us right now which obviously that's coming from some turnovers uh, uncharacteristic for us to turn the ball over this much but we need to just be patient reverse the basketball some good things have happened when we've executed what are they doing defensively to turn you over so much? Well, uh, it's, it, we're in a hurry. Uh, you know, they're, they're deflecting a lot of balls and uh, reversal. Reversal will cause them some problems, but we're trying to make, make everything happen after one pass. We just need to be more patient. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. So Karen Aston's team in a 10-point hole right now. And could this be the last quarter of play for the dynamic backcourt, the seniors, Brooke McCarty and Ariel Atkins, four for four, not just in tournament appearances, but Sweet 16s, both leaving their names all over the Texas record books. But 29 points off turnovers. UCLA has scored. And Texas, there were four lead changes in that third quarter. Texas led by as many as three before UCLA closed on a 17 to four run. Yeah, and this is, this is the fourth quarter, so this is where you want to see your senior shine on both sides. Mississippi State plays the winner Sunday night here in Kansas City. Ariel Atkins just talked about her. She does not want to go home anytime soon. And they ran a clear out for her, got her at that high post area, letting her go to the basket. Strong drive left. UCLA has only been to one Elite Eight in their history. That was in 1999. And an offensive foul. They're going to get Billings for a moving screen. That is the second on Billings, who only took a couple of shots in the third quarter. Yeah, she just 0 for 2 in the third quarter. So that's another senior we expect to step up in this fourth quarter, last 10 minutes. And that was after Billings led her team with 11 points in the first half. We see Joyner Holmes at the point, and Coach Aston does this just a few times a game, but it lets Atkins run more at that four spot. McCarty with the one-handed floater. Atkins picked her up. Ariel into double figures. 
lead down to six. And it has been a game of runs. Back and forth. Every time you think UCLA might just go ahead and grab the lead and, and keep it for good, Texas fights back. Canada. Holmes. Party calls for the basketball. Inside to White, who has been terrific. Nowhere to go with Billings all over. And now Canada off to the races. She's not giving it up, and she scores over McCarty, who fouled her. Jordan Canada finishes as well, if not better, than any other guard in the country in transition. That's Canada going up with her left hand. And the last time these two teams met, it was two years ago in the Sweet 16. And Texas was down, but then overwhelmed UCLA's outscoring them by 14 in the decisive fourth quarter. That was in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Remember, we talked to Monique Billings and Jordan Canada about that meeting and asked if they remembered it, and Monique said absolutely. She was quick to shake her head and remember that they had that opportunity to move on and let it slip to, and let it slip away. But she doesn't want that to happen again. And Atkins has other things on her mind. Heating up now in the fourth quarter. Ariel Atkins taking her game to another level. Billings guarded by White, doesn't even look for her shot. Canada stepped in to get a closer look. She had two points at the half and is up to 16. Right in the passing lane, another turnover by Texas. Canada got fouled again. You love watching these seniors. Nobody wants to go home. Jordan Canada in the open court. Pressing action. And then I love that Canada had the three but chose to shot fake, get herself in a little closer, higher percentage shot. What a difference the second half for the senior from Los Angeles. Part of that class that came in so heralded that they had not gotten past the Sweet 16, much less to the Final Four. The lead is back to 10 with under seven and a half to go. Texas 28 and 6 on the year. Half of those losses came to Baylor, who was eliminated earlier tonight by Oregon State. McCarty, that was halfway down. Atkins tried to keep it alive. Yeah, they went back to their 2 3 zone and lost McCarty in the zone. They were very fortunate she didn't come away with a three. Yeah, boy, she had a wide open look. And a floater by Burke. 12-point lead. Biggest lead of the night for the Bruins. Higgs, Joyner Holmes. They need some stops. And I thought Higgs had the shot, but she hasn't been hitting, so she did a nice job finding her teammate. And Higgs just went seven tonight, only two points. Canada tried to do the pick and roll, but Holmes got in the way. Bounce pass to McCarty. He brings a really good pass and a really good catch. Yeah, great job to track that one down. Billings off glass. First score for Billings in the second half. Her first field goal. Since halftime, Atkins, so smooth. Timeout taken by Texas as the lead is cut to eight. 
540 left to go, a spot in the Elite Eight on the line in Kansas City. Dick Schaefer, one step closer to his second straight Final Four. Win over NC State in our first game tonight. They go back to their second straight Elite Eight. He is scouting. The NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues at 11.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Eastern, respectively, with Sweet 16 matchups from Albany, South Carolina Buffalo, the number one UConn Spoilers off against Duke. Everything streams live on the ESPN app. Buffalo and Central Michigan, two 11 seeds from the MAC, making it to the Sweet 16. Central plays Oregon tomorrow. Billings, boom. UCLA faithful on hand as the lead goes back into double digits. Ariel Atkins has nine points in this quarter. After an uncharacteristically slow start, Jatari White. She has been golden. That's one thing that Texas is winning handily is paint points. Now plus 10. But everything else skewing towards UCLA, especially the points off turnovers, which is an astonishing 31. Yeah, you just don't see that at this level. Shot clock in the single digits, and it rolls in. Onionware's first basket of the second half. and Texas can't afford to just keep trading baskets with UCLA. UCLA, that was Burke who stuck her hand in to force yet another turnover. Sports Center coming your way tonight at 11.30 Eastern time. All the top moments in reaction from the Sweet 16. Madison Bumgarner broke his hand. And also we'll look at Josh Allen's Pro Day. All that and more also streams live on the ESPN app. That's a great Sweet 16 action. The women's side, Baylor upset by Oregon State. Is the Pac-12 about to make it a double dip against the Big 12? Billings can't get it. White with the rebound. The last foul, by the way, was on Jatari White for Texas. She's got three, but she's going to stay in there during the bitter end. Atkins. Double figures in this quarter alone for the senior from Duncanville. And UCLA can take the air out of the ball a little bit. UCLA going back to its ball screens. They've been so effective for them tonight. Billings took a step. Yes, she did. Billings with 17 points, seven rebounds. Played just about every second of this game. And Jordan Canada hasn't shot in a few possessions. She's got 16 points in this half, so look for her next time down to get a shot. Billings third foul, willing to second team foul, but a shooting foul. And that sends Sean Higgs in the first two rounds. She was 15 of 19 from the floor, 79%. 17 points per game. Tonight only two points, one of seven from the floor. Well, and more than that, it's the five turnovers she has. So it's one thing not to hit your shot, but when you're also turning the ball over, especially against a team that likes to get out and run like UCLA, that's a problem. Wow, and she just missed two free throws, normally a 73% free throw shooter. Higgs, who came over from her native Bahamas as a young teenager. Having a tough game. Inside three minutes. Burke calling for help. Billings outside of her range. Shot clock at four. Canada! Off the back of the rim. Boy, and Atkins and McCarty both went for the ball at the same time, and it ended up with the Bruin. And a good timeout by Corey Close. Get her team settled down a bit. Make sure you've got the right people taking the shots. And 
UCLA with the lead as we take a look to, at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance, and it is the senior Monique Phillips. Yeah, and she really got UCLA started off early. She was very focused. She hit the outside shot, drove to the basket, really caused problems for the Texas Bigs. Got on the offensive glass, a little bit of everything. Billings in Canada who have built themselves as peanut butter and jelly. And they've been as good as that. Better. They've been smooth. Not crunchy. There, no, but like a nice fluffy peanut butter and jelly tonight. Holmes. Stuffed! Billings got her! UCLA! Getting closer to the Elite Eight! That was the block of the night. Big three! Shook Sutton from St. Louis. But it's still a 10-point advantage. Canada's not slowing down for anybody. And that's where she needs to slow down. Listen to the coach. Play with some poise. Work the clock. Two minutes to go. Texas needs to make up seven points, and there's three of them! Ariel Atkins! A fantastic fourth quarter. And it's only a four-point lead. Could have called a foul right there. <laughs> Burke with the drive and put it in on the baseline. Going to be Burke coming up big over her season average now. 15 points. The Cardi runner, nothing doing. Rebound taken down by Canada, and now she slows down a little bit, at least momentarily. Yeah, both teams are exhausted. It has been a track meet. Canada overhead! Style points for the UCLA senior. The lead grows to eight. Jordan, Canada is putting on a show. Goodness gracious. She's got the moves, she's got the style. She can sing, she can dance, and Lord knows she can play ball. The finish over Atkins. That's a Sports Center highlight right there. It better be in the top 10. Boy, and Atkins could have been called for a foul there. Jordan Canada, three-time captain, had her second career triple-double earlier this year. Well, and here's the thing, too, you've got to keep in mind. UCLA, they've got two fouls to give as well. So you don't want Texas to get in any kind of rhythm. Once they get it down court, go ahead, take a foul, make them take it out of bounds. No open looks. Brooke McCarty. He's a Big 12 Player of the Year last year as a junior. Puts it up. Short. Rebound Canada. She's looking at the rim. She got the rim. And the basket. And the foul. Now, as a coach, are you thinking, pull it out? <laughs> That's where, as a coach, you say, no, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Great play. And again, they've just been so active on the boards and in transition. And Jordan, Jordan Canada in the second half has been unstoppable. Except for her free throws, usually she's money from there. She's missed four free throws in nine attempts. But she's got 20 points in the second half. Canada just picked up her foul, her third. But Monique Billings, and she's been out there pretty much the entire game. And that's our Capital One rewarding performance for the senior from Corona, California.
Hardly got any sleep the night before last because she had a paper that was due yesterday and was studying for a final she had to take today. And I think she is passing the Sweet 16 test right now. Rebound Billings. The Texas seniors on this team, Brooke McCarty, Ariel Atkins, came in together four years ago. Sutton just picked up the foul. Four straight Sweet 16s. They had not done that as a team gone to four in a row since the early 2000s. And there's Brooke McCarty. She will not soon be forgotten in Austin. You know, these two have taken Texas back to the elite level. Dean, the Austin native, transfer from Texas Tech, gets one out of two. And there's just 26 seconds left. UCLA has only been to the Elite Eight once in the women's NCAA tournament. It was in 1999. Kathy Olivier, the head coach, and they beat Colorado State in what was Becky Hammond's last collegiate game for the Rams. And Lana Martin, who is one of the best scorers in the history, right there, got the basket. So UCLA, 26 seconds away from getting back to the Elite Eight for only the second time. They did win a national championship pre-NCAA days in 1978 in the AIAW when they beat Maryland in the title game. A player by the name of Ann Myers back then who was pretty good. <laughs> Four time Annie All American. Myers. I know Annie's watching tonight. She absolutely is, and she's got to be so proud. And UCLA about to put away a very good Texas team. Go. Good decision by Burke not to foul. Yeah, they'll give up the two, but they still have one foul to give. Certainly don't want to foul anybody in the act of shooting. Sutton has just fouled out for Texas. Texas foul, number one, Duke Sutton. Duke Sutton from across the state. John Sutton gave him some good minutes. Texas, number 15, Chastity Patterson. Chastity Patterson, a freshman from Houston, gets her first minutes. Uh, Sutton goes she out with 10 Dean points. Line, shooting two. And Japrice Dean back to the line. And UCLA has missed some free throws down the stretch. They're leaving a lot of points on the table. It's 10 for 19. They shoot 72%, which was fifth best in the Pac-12. Higgs has had an off night. Jordan Canada collects it. And UCLA, for the first time since 1999, is moving on to the Elite Eight. Seniors Monique Billings, Jordan Canada, Kelly Hayes, Coming back for at least one more game. Corey Close with some nice words, no doubt, for the seniors. Now Ariel Atkins, before that, Brooke McCarty. Great respect for them as their brilliant careers come to a close. Corey Close has got to be so pleased with her team. They came ready to play. Really just out-hustled and out-muscled Texas for this win. At the half. It was an eight-point lead, and Texas came out, took a three-point lead, and UCLA responded. So UCLA, the number three seed, will take on top seed Mississippi State Sunday at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Kansas City time on ESPN. And the winner of that game will move on to the Final Four in Columbus. Corey Close standing by now with Courtney Lyle. Coach, this senior class has done so much for you guys, and now they've brought you to your second ever Elite Eight. 
what do they mean to this program? Well, they've just done, they've had the courage to dream really big, but also to work really big, and they've delivered, and I'm just so proud of them. But I said at the beginning of the game, we knew that Jordan and Mo, even though they had their ups and downs, we knew what they would bring. But the other players on the team that stepped up, you know, Michaela coming in and really hitting some big shots. Kennedy Burke, I thought, was just so key for us. I could go on and on, but that senior class has put us in a foundation level in our culture and our program for other people to be equipped to do that. You forced 21 turnovers and score 31 points off of those turnovers. How scrappy was your defense? Well, it was the difference maker. I mean, I think that we didn't really play that well offensively, but our defense created easier shot opportunities. And then I thought Jordan Canada played with so much poise. Didn't shoot the ball very well that first half, but then came down in the second half, and I just thought run it, ran our team and then hit big shots. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Thank you. Jordan Canada with 20 of her 22 points in the second half, gets a hug from her coach. Jordan also had five rebounds, eight assists, and five steals. So we'll see you for UCLA and Mississippi State on Sunday night. UCLA does it. For Gail Guestencores and Courtney Lyle, I'm Pam Ward. As we say, so long from Kansas City, UCLA on to the Elite Eight. We take you to the studio.